All right, so I'm Malte Schwarzkopf from Cambridge, and I'm going to tell you about DIOS, which is a distributed operating system for data centers um, that we're developing in Cambridge. So what is the problem that we're addressing here? Um, we've seen lots of boxes and lots of stacks today, but if you think about you know, the usual way we build distributed systems applications in terms of the abstractions that we use to express them, in terms of how you actually express you know, an object that you're dealing with in your distributed system, it usually looks a bit like this. You have you know, some sort of JSON or protobuf or thrift or some other serialized version of the object which you're probably storing in some sort of in-memory cache and then that ends up being you know, stored in a, in, a, in a file on a distributed file system like HDFS or GFS. Um, and then that in itself is you know, when you're interacting with it is mapped into memory by the operating system. And you know, at the end of the day, it ends up being a, a, a file on disk in a kernel file system like X3 or X4. And likewise, if we think about the active code that runs, um, we usually have some sort of cluster level task abstraction. And then below that, we have you know, a user level thread that actually runs the task. That itself gets mapped to a kernel process in Linux, which itself you know, may end up being inside an, another process that represents a container or a VM. Um, and you know, then eventually there's hardware threads. Now, what we notice here, and this is sort of the OS boundary, um, that's not very important, in, um, but you know, is sort of where the OS code ends and the user application code starts. Um, we kind of have abstraction turtles all the way, to, well, way down, and that's not very surprising. That's you know, computer science works that way. We always add another layer of indirection, and it's also got lots of good properties. Um, it you know, gives us abstraction. Ha ha. Um, that's actually a very useful thing to have um, because it in, um, increases portability, um, it, keeps, it gives people easy to understand concepts. But you know, all of this abstracting, abstracting, abstracting it also comes with negative consequences. We've already heard some of them today, but I'm going to add a few more. So I'm going to conjecture that the, all of these you know, divergent abstractions are quite bad for getting scalability because you're always limited to the least scalable of your abstractions. They're bad for co-scheduling because you don't really know what you're scheduling at each of the levels because you don't know what it actually maps to. They're bad for data locality. They're bad for tracking data flow through the whole system. They're bad for security because you know, if any one of them is broken, then the whole thing is broken. And they're generally bad for adding other sort of optimizations that actually require you to sort of have a vertically sliced view where you can actually see the whole stack. Um, and you know, this again echoes things we've heard before today. So the plan with DIOS is to go, well, we can actually do better than that. What if we went away from POSIX and said we're going to design a completely new operating system API for data centers explicitly designed for distributed systems? Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to vertically integrate all of the abstractions. So we have distributed applications running on top of distributed infrastructure applications like HDFS or GFS or those sorts of things. And we are going to have a distributed operating system. And all of these will use one distributed object abstraction. So they all use the same abstraction to refer to things. Now they might have, you know, they might load or uh, overload it with their own abstractions. So for example, a file system will have its own tree abstraction on top of this distributed object scheme. But when they refer to an object, they all understand all the layers understand each other. So the architecture of DOS looks a bit like this. You have a machine and you know another machine, they have a sort of standard network stack and a standard legacy kernel. And in there, the green bits are DOS bits. So you get some DOS naming, you get some capabilities, you get some thread scheduling. And DOS then sort of you know, spans the machines and actually gives you a single machine abstraction almost um, over the entire data center. So it's kind of like a single system image sort of thing, but a bit different. Um, and on top of DOS, you can then build your distributed infrastructure, you know, name services, file systems, key value stores, cluster schedulers, and the user jobs run and interact with these using their own APIs. Um, so that sounds very nice. Um, how does it actually turn out? Well, I don't have time to go into a copious amount of detail, but I'm happy to, uh, to tell you more if you're interested. It's a very narrow system call API. Um, we add 11 system calls to POSIX. Linux in the current version that we're working with has 326 system calls to begin with. We add 11, and actually for a lot of data center applications, that's enough. We did a study and we found that most applications basically use read, write, and some synchronization service calls on the critical path. Um, DIOS also uses UUIDs to globally name objects, so you can refer to any object from anywhere in the system. 
And then there's this concept of translucency, which is a bit of a funny concept. I'll explain that in detail in a second. It's basically when you interact with an object, you have to get not just, you, you can either have its name or you can have a handle to it, which is called a reference. It's a bit like a reference in something like Java, but it's not a language level reference. Um, and you give that to a system call like a file descriptor as an argument. Um, so this object down here um, is represented in the kernel as this kref, which is sort of the private part of the reference, but it also exposes some properties to user space. And that's why it says contextual up there, um, because you have some information that only the kernel can see, but there's also some information that's exposed to user space. And these are useful things like, is this object on persistent storage? What is its proximity? Is it on the same machine? Is it across the network? Does it fit, share its fate with the task that's accessing it? What is the right buffer size? These sorts of things. You don't have to know this. You can treat objects as completely transparent and just interact with them, but you might get non-deterministic performance because you don't actually know what it is that you're talking to. You may as well be talking to a machine at the remote end of the data center. Now, in terms of actual implementation, the way this works out is that we add these syscalls, these 11 syscalls that I've mentioned, and some DOS extensions to a host kernel. In the prototype, it's Linux, but it could be BSD or it could be something else, um, or a complete bespoke kernel as well. Um, and you can run legacy processes alongside. Um, they just make legacy syscalls. They happily live in their own world. Um, and DOS processes only make DOS syscalls and happily live in their own world. And in fact, if they try to make a legacy system call, they just get killed. So, you know, you have very strong isolation there that you can only interact with, with the system via the DOS system calls. You can also have hybrid processes that kind of live in both worlds, um, and they can do either. And there's a cluster scheduler who's also a bit special because he can make some DOS syscalls. I don't, I'm not going to go into details on the scheduler, but ask me if you want to find out more. So in the prototype, the way we implemented it is we took Linux, there's a small kernel patch that sets up the system call handlers, um, but actually all of the core logic in DOS is in a kernel module, um, which is, you know, it's a dynamically loadable module. In fact, it's actually two modules. There's one BSD licensed module that has the entire core logic, the one down there, um, all of the distributed stuff, and then the adaptation layer this other module up there is actually the one that has all the Linux kernel-specific calls. So if we were to port DOS to BSD, for example, we, just would, we would just have to write a new DOS abstraction layer. The core module is just simple ANSI C and makes calls into the abstraction layer. So when a user process makes a system call, it ends up being redirected via the kernel patch into the DOS module, which has the handler, and then that might use the DOS adaptation layer to invoke some Linux kernel functionality like memory allocation or memory mapping or process creation, those sorts of things, which tend to differ between host kernels. Um, now, I say demo time, and this is probably where the kernel is going to crash on me, but I will be brave and try. So, can you read this, or should I make it bigger? Okay, I'll try. That better? Okay, so I'm going to load the kernel module. Aha, uh -huh. operation not permitted. Well, that's because I didn't put sudo. Um, here's where it starts going wrong. All right, so um, now ls mod grep. Uh, well, I'm just going to run ls mod. We're going to see it on here somewhere. Uh, we, we won't. Well, Dios is in there. Um, <laughs> uh, now, now I'm, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to run. I'm going to have to run it. Yeah, OK, there we go. I didn't lie. Um, it's loaded. All right, so what I'm going to run now um, is a simple MapReduce job. Um, I assume most people are familiar with MapReduce, but this is effectively what it does. We have some input objects, which are these sheets of paper. They're just blobs on disk that get memory mapped uh, in, into memory by DOS. Then we have some map tasks. In fact, this job is going to be doing a word count which uh, reads uh, read, uh, the map task to read ASCII text and emit a tuple of the word and, and the number one. Um, and then there's a couple of streaming objects, these little tubes that represent stream objects um, in DOS, which effectively end up um, redirecting the streams to the reduce tasks. So all of these tuples get dumped into these streams, which then surf the reduce tasks. They can be on the same machine. In this case, they are, but they could be on different machines as well. Um, and then obviously we would be using TCP or UDP or some network stream rather than a, a sort of shared memory stream. And the reduced tasks will then aggregate the tuples and you know, produce a word count um, and outcome some lists with results. All right, so I'm going to run this. And there we go. It is map reducing. Now, 
This unfortunately terminates so quickly that I couldn't run HTOP to convince you that it's actually running MapReduce tasks, but believe me, there were five tasks running on this machine who were doing the MapReduce, and I can you know, go into more detail with the demo later if, if you want. Um, and you know, I, I, we can also build other, this MapReduce is sort of a very simple case because it's very deterministic. Um, it, you know, just has it has replay based fault tolerance and deterministic data flow, but we can we have also got a web server and sort of more event driven applications written against the DOS object model. Um, now, what's the status of all of this? Um, it's pretty alpha. Um, some things crash the kernel sometimes, um, but you know it is getting to the point where it's slightly more usable. Um, I can now run these things like MapReduce. I can run a web server and those sorts of things, um, and obviously there's a lot more work to be done. Some of the work in progress is we're looking at porting a high-level language runtime to DOS because actually currently you have to write your programs directly against the system call API. There's no libc, there's nothing. You just have to write you know, directly against the syscall API with some convenience wrappers that, that we developed. Um, so someone is working on a, a Rust runtime on top of DOS. So um, Rust is actually a very good fit because it has these serializable closures and it can be adapted to run inside DOS tasks. Um, and obviously, we're also working on a standard library that you know, has a bunch of libc functionality to make your life a little bit easier. Um, MapReduce, I showed you. There's also web server, key value store, these sorts of demo applications. Um, and that's it, pretty much. Um, it's all research, so you know, don't, don't expect to deploy this in production anytime soon. Um, but you know, it's, it's a sort of investigation into you know, what can we do if we say, you know, if we redo the abstractions completely, if we don't, you know, try to be backwards compatible with POSIX. And you can still run your legacy processes alongside, but the DOS processes are completely so compartmentalized in the DOS world. Thank you.